dentist's office. Hey, open wide. Have you got any fillings? Potatoes? Crowns? Oh, my gift to see a good root canal. Hey everyone, we are back at the Festival of the Holidays here at Epcot to try more of that unbelievable food. Last time we were here together, I was so impressed by the food, I had to come back and try more. Of course, this will be happening many times through the season and it's going to be great. It's actually relatively cold, as you've noticed. It dipped down to, I think, the 40s. At one point, I think it's going down to the 30s at some points. That's really cold for Florida. I know those up north are saying to themselves, Mike, what are you talking about? But it's cold for us. I've lost all my cold resistance living in Florida. It's cold. First up on our list today is the seared scallops from the Yukon. Now these are ones that I'm pretty sure we've tried before, but I love scallops so, so much. And with that apple chutney, oh, I've got to try it again for the holidays. Perfect day for it. Now while I'm standing here, I'm thinking to myself, beef bourguignon sounds unbelievable. So I think we might try that as well. Sounds super good. They also have the frozen coffee. That is one that I've been meaning to try. I don't think we tried it last year. Pretty sure we haven't tried it before, pretty sure. So, not tonight, obvious reasons, but I don't think it's gonna get much warmer, so we'll, we'll try it on a sunny afternoon when it's sunnier. From the Yukon Holiday Kitchen, we're trying the scallops, which look really, really good. They've actually got the parsnip silk and apple chutney along with it. Sounds so, so good. We've also got the beef bourguignon with crushed potatoes. It looks delicious. Looking forward to diving in. Let's start with the scallops first. Getting a lot of potatoes with it. You ready? Bon appetit. That is a very good scallop. It's very unique with the apple chutney. It makes it super, super unique. I've had better scallops right off the bat because I've had more tender ones I have, but the flavor in these scallops is so unique that they are definitely worth getting. For, for me, this is like a, a special scallop. It's not like a regular, it's a special scallop. The potatoes do add, but I feel like the apple chutney is what really brings it all together. So make sure you have a little bite of both the scallop, the potatoes, and the chutney all together for that full flavor. Next up, we've got the beef bourguignon. It looks really good and you get a lot right there. There's a lot in there. We're gonna try a big bite together. First bite was basically all potato and a little bit of the bourguignon sauce with the beef on the side. I need to go kind of go again to get more of the beef. Not bad, but nothing I'd go out of my way for. I feel like the beef flavor Flavor is very kind of standard beef bourguignon, nothing super fantastic. Here at Yukon so far, the scallops are the real unique ones, the ones that I can see myself getting again for sure. One thing I really like about the beef bourguignon is the fact that you get a lot of food here, there's a lot to it, and there's onions and potatoes together. It's kind of mixed up into a full meal, full bowl meal here, that's a lot. It does taste okay though, nothing I'd go out of my way for. So overall, I think I'd get something else at the Festival of the Holidays, but not bad. Now I was thinking to myself, you know, it got super cold super fast, so if, if I was visiting Disney, I might not be this prepared. I might have shorts and a t-shirt for everything, no jacket. But I'm seeing a lot of guests who came well prepared. That's a really good thing, really, really good thing, because it, it got, I mean, 30 degrees colder in one night. So cold. Back inside World Show Place now, and one of the items that I saw on the menu that I really wanted to try was the duck confit and dumplings. Do you remember how much we enjoyed the duck confit? Uh, I don't know what it was. It was uh, Festival Food and Wine, Food and Wine Festival. I think it was the duck, duck confit poutine. No, it wasn't poutine. No, no, it was duck confit. But I loved it from France. But they have it here at the Festival Favorites. We gotta try it. In addition to that duck confit with the dumplings, sounds amazing. I also wanna try this other non-alcoholic beverage here. The conquito, I believe is how you pronounce that. It's tropical eggnog, tropical. That, that's gonna be great, I gotta try that. Okay. Or coconut, but if you like eggnog and coconut, I recommend I love both those okay. things, let's try that. From Festival Favorites, we're trying three different items, all ones that I'm so looking forward to. The first one is the duck confit. This one has those roasted Brussels sprouts and fig reduction. I am so looking forward to this, and it's actually a lot more duck than I was expecting. In addition, I was convinced to try the blackened bass with the white cheddar grits. Grits, you know I'm all about the grits, so gotta give those a try. In addition, saw the tropical eggnog, and I said to myself, hey, non-alcoholic drink, we've gotta try it. We've gotta try all the non-alcoholic drinks that we can find, so let's dig into all of it. Should, should we try the eggnog first? I think we should. Cheers. First sip is delicious. I like it a lot. You can taste coconut in there. That's where they're going with tropical. I was thinking to myself, it's gonna be a warmer eggnog. No, it's not. It's still cold, it's still delicious, but it's got the coconut with the eggnog. 
Tastes really good, not my favorite eggnog of all time. That's me, it's, it's just a personal taste thing. This may be your favorite. If you love coconut, like, to the next level, this is definitely one to try. If you're not as big a fan of coconut, may want to wait for a different eggnog. That's me. Now let's try that one I'm most excited about here from Festival Favorites, the duck confit. I'm going to cut it up here. It's actually a much larger piece of duck than I was expecting. We've got some of that fig reduction there. You ready? Bon appetit. Duck is cooked extremely well, falling off the bone. The fig reduction pulls the flavor of the duck to your palate. Very difficult to describe here, but imagine the sweetness kind of pulling out a taste of duck. If you had duck before, you probably know where I'm going with that absolutely delicious. Really, really good. Now it is on the bone, so it's a little bit of a different type of duck than we're used to, but really do like it. Gotta try that dumpling as well. Dumpling's not bad. Nothing I'd go out of my way for there, but the duck. I'm gonna get one more taste and we'll get our full opinion on the duck really falling off the bone here. I mean, that's yum. Overall on the duck, I love it. I really, really do. It's not my favorite duck dish of all time. I, I'm gonna leave that with France and the uh, Food and Wine Festival. That duck, I don't know why, it was like a stronger duck taste. It was, it was really being pulled out there. You could taste every small flavor. This one, it's more on the bone. So you do get more of that flavor from the bone. I think that's where it, it kind of comes from. It is delicious. Not one I'd go out of my way for, not one I'd get again, but I still do like it. So it, does, it doesn't mean I don't like it, just not my favorite thing. If you love duck, I'd try that one. Now it's time to try the blackened bass with the grits there. You ready? Here we go. First bite, much stronger bass flavor than I was expecting. Hit me in like a weird way. I was thinking to myself, okay, this this cannot be, this cannot be like that fishy. It's that fishy. It's it's serious bass. They're not messing around with this bass. It's very good. It, it takes you by surprise though. Just expect the bass. I didn't expect, I had the duck first. I didn't expect the bass. Expect it when you bite into it. I love the grits here. Grits here are fantastic. Really, really good. The bass itself though, extremely fishy. I think it's a good one. I, I need several more bites of it to really kind of get the full flavor of it. Somehow it, it hit me in such a weird way when I first bit into it after the duck. I can't really get my palate cleansed. Need more of the tropical eggnog to really taste it. After a few more bites, the bass is good, not great. Not one I'd go out of my way for. I've had better bass, no doubt about it. I'd get used to the fishy taste. Overall thoughts on it, it, it is kind of like a, a gumbo, all in one plate, and I really, it's a great idea, but I think the implementation needs to be adjusted just a little bit to enhance more of those flavors. The best piece of that dish, by far, the grits. So good. Overall thoughts on these two. Do like them, but neither of them are worth going out of your way for, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. The eggnog, though, if you like coconut, that may be that one. One thing that I've noticed is a little bit of a change here. Yorkshire County Fish Shop and some of the other dining venues are open on weeknights. That is definitely a change from what we saw before. In the past, Yorkshire County Fish Shop was only open on the weekends. So, this is nice. I'm all for it. Bush de Noel Alnacamo, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I've been talking about it. I've been thinking about it. It's time for it. We're, we're gonna try it together from France. I've been thinking about this one since the start of the Festival of the Holidays, the Bush de Noel. So looking forward to that one. I should note it is different from years past. Even though it looks different, we're going for the taste. We are totally going for the taste. Are you ready? Are you excited? I'm excited. Let's, let's dig right in. First bite is a rich chocolate fudge taste right there at the top. Missing a bit of the Bush de Noel feel to it. There, there's, a, there's a feel, but I think it's probably in the middle with the caramel. I'm going to take like a second big old chunk right there so we can taste that caramel with it. Absolutely delicious. Delicious. Love that one so much. The caramel. You've got to get to the caramel in the middle for this one. It's up there. I would get this one again. I can see myself coming out of my way for it at least once or twice just because it is really, really good. It's not the best dessert I've ever had. It's not. And the Bush de Noel last year and years past were better was. But this, with the caramel, is unique. They didn't have the caramel like this last year, at least as far as I remember. So this is really, really good. One that I enjoy if you like chocolate, if you like caramel, you're going to want to try that one. Overall, I really do like the Bush de Noel. It's really good. It is. Somehow, that caramel in the middle really enhances it. Now, you have to like dark chocolate. I feel like that's kind of a, a piece of it. It's a very dark chocolate, almost a fudge taste to the chocolate, plus that cake and the caramel. I love it. I really, really do. Is it best to start a festival of the holidays? I'll get back to you on that. Now, the opening day of this new area is still several, I'm gonna say, weeks. Could be 
multiple several weeks, but a little while away. But take a look, the sign for Ratatouille is already lit up here. I'm not sure if we saw this before, but I don't remember it. So cool. Before you know it, we're gonna be walking right under here to try some grapes, or crepes, I said grapes, try some crepes, and to go on an amazing new ride. It has reached a coldness level where I'm doing something I have not done yet, putting on gloves, and I'm so glad I got these gloves. Remember I got them? I forgot how many days ago, a little while ago. I got these gloves super, super handy, let me tell you, especially because it's getting cooler out. I do have a sweatshirt in my bag as well, so. I'm sad, I'm prepared, but it's getting colder by the minute. I think that's probably why a little lighter tonight. As you can see. Now, one of the items that I've really been thinking about for Festival of the Holidays is here at Funnel Cakes by the American uh, Adventure Pavilion. It's served with marshmallow toppings, cinnamon sugar, honey roasted pecans, and caramel drizzle. It sounds so, so good, but I need David to help us eat that one. We gotta be like really hungry on that day, but some of these specialty uh, funnel cakes that you find just fantastic. Just a few days ago, Disney shared even more of those behind the scenes look at Harmonious, the very, very brand new, highly anticipated final fireworks show that will go here inside of Epcot. It's going to replace Epcot Forever and Illuminations Reflections of Earth. That's a tough one, let me tell you. But in terms of Epcot Forever, my question is, are we going to see Epcot Forever again? You know, it was here for a little while. It was always supposed to be a limited run. And by this point, we're thinking about maybe it won't be anymore. We saw it a little bit, a couple of us saw it with those kites and everything, and now maybe we won't see it. I don't know this. I don't know for sure. I've just been thinking about it quite a bit. Maybe that was like the shortest run, you know, small fireworks show, and if you saw it, great. If not, you can catch those videos. But tough to know what the future holds, but if I had to guess, Fireworks at Walt Disney World will start first here at Epcot. It makes the most sense because there's so much more space to walk all the way around World Showcase Lagoon and find a great spot to see it. So you can see it here, you can walk in this direction, see it from all over. So I think when we see fireworks in a larger capacity, we were at Magic Kingdom the other day, we saw some great fireworks there, but that's just like a pop. We're talking about a fireworks show. I think it's either gonna be here at World Showcase or perhaps Fantasmic, where they can also kind of organize where people are. This is really incredible to me. A little bit less than an hour. We still time, still park time, still festival of the holidays time, and we've got these kind of crowds. Now the cold does play into it, I should mention that, but if you're looking for the lowest crowds, I think we've just refound them, refound them. It's weeknight, colder, <laughs> weeknight, earlier in the week, and you're in great shape because this is, this is really, really nice. Take a look at these stalls right here. I just came across them as we were walking from Germany towards the outpost. And look, they've got Disney characters as these dolls. They're called Precious Moments, and you've got all sorts of different ones. Once Upon a Time. Look at this Lumiere one here. That That is super, super cute. Then you've got, of course, Belle right back there. And they go on and on and on. And you've got boy ones and girl ones there, and even genie ones. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. oh my gosh, that's a good one. I think it might be my favorite here. But I feel like these are super, super nice. And the fact that they're themed as Disney characters is just... Look at that. Oh yeah, it's Mickey and Minnie, and even Donald and Daisy. <laughs> it's great. So, so great. See, the prices seem to vary right around $59 or $69.99, somewhere in there. Tons and tons of characters here. Oh, I love this Hercules one. Wait a minute, we're almost done, almost done. There's the Hercules right down there along with some pirates. So cool. Thinking of Harmonious, the barge is literally right there. We, I, I basically can see it, not really, it's like, it's like I'm trying to see it through the trees right there. There is something back there kind of stationed by the water. This is the bridge where they will come out at some point in the future. But it's back there waiting, just waiting for its opportunity to showcase itself to us all. We're gonna be here for that very special day and it's one that I am so looking forward to. 40 minutes of park time left. Wait time here says 45 minutes. Seeing it, like looking at the fact that there's nothing that goes all the way back to China, I'd imagine probably like a 20 minute line. I feel like that's the new secret time to see the parks. Not to yourself, but far, far, far more space. And I feel like Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, I'm not sure if they apply in the same way. I think Epcot's kind of got its own thing going on here with these lower crowds late at night. Really nice.
take a look at this 360 just for a minute. There's Mexico behind me, turning, 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 turning. Here's the World Showcase entryway right there, port of entry, all of that. It's really incredible when you see it. The reason I'm pointing this out, the reason why it's so relevant is I haven't seen it like this since it reopened. Yeah, for, for months. This is pretty cool. We'll test it again in a few weeks as we get closer to Christmas and uh, we'll see if it's the same. Inside Disney Traveler, take a look at the special prizes that you can get for completing that very special Olaf scavenger hunt. Now you remember Remy from the past for food and wine. Now you've got those Olaf mugs and these are great. They're actually kind of that cool material plastic a little bit. He's looking for those traditions. We see that one with Olaf. There's one with Anna and Elsa. You can see Olaf kind of making the tree there with them. See that? That's such a nice one. I think if I was to pick one, it'd be either this one in the middle or perhaps the end one. The end one, Olaf is actually playing with those, uh, <laughs> those uh, it's almost like, um, oh, what do you call it, like paper, paper men, paper women right there where you kind of cut them out of paper and hang them up. Isn't that so cool? And you can see Kristoff is upside down. That is fantastic. Love these. So I did the math and I asked the cast member. These sweatshirts are usually $65. With the 70% off, that would make them $20. They have an annual pass or other discount. It would make them $16 for these sweatshirts here. Big discounts in the parks for 2020 merchandise. Taking in all those details today. Take a look. You can see here is the child lounge fly backpack. Very popular. Look at the zipper pull. The zip <laughs> zipper pull. He's a frog. Oh my gosh, that's great. That is so, so great. So it's like he's eating it. That's so funny. Take a look at the baby Yoda here, the child, move, real life moving plush. They say it's plush. It's actually more of like a, like a skin almost feel to him. And you can use the force as well. To me, that is so, so cool. Also got a very cool pendant, that you know, and he's got this little controller. You can control him like from the wrist. So you can kind of interact with you. I think you can follow along or you can control his movements just a bit like with this joystick right here. Very cool, $69.99. Several of them, very popular. Such a magical day today. More food items to try. And what I've been doing this year, and I'm trying to be better at this. I've been only okay at this. I've been actually marking off the items we've already tried and designating them numbers to kind of give me an idea of how good the item really was. So hopefully at the end, we'll have a full list or at least partially full, of all the items we've tried together, see what's really good, what's only okay, what I wouldn't go out of my way for. That way we'll know at the end. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day. Oh.